And welcome, Tony Deborah. And Thank you, us, Dougal. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your relationship with H.D. Skinner. Right. I'm Jane Skinner, my wife, is, is the oldest granddaughter of H.D. Um, and uh, I met him yeah, about 1973 and met him a number of times uh, in between then and when he finally died in, in 1978. He was a very mild man, um, slim, small, uh, very mild, but quite firm on things he wanted to be firm about. He was often seen about town on the arm of his son, as I remember. Yes, he that's become quite James' a father. I guess that's yeah. the case, yes. Yeah. In the nicest possible way. Indeed, indeed. Now, you have some letters from H.D. Yeah. We have Tell us about them. These were letters that he wrote immediately after his, his evacuation from, from Gallipoli. He was at the Chanak Bear Battle um, and wrote back to family. His father what was the Commissioner of Crown Lands um, and these letters were circulated then th through the Skinner family. Um, and they're very, they're very interesting. He was an educated man um, and uh, he had some succinct comments to make about what had gone on. Well, succinct comments weren't always possible in, in the mail of the time, so how did he manage no, to get them through? Well, he did seem to do that um, and uh, certainly they weren't complimentary to the British Army. No. Uh, but that's all that come out since then that he was probably right. Now he was awarded for bravery. He was. Well, firstly, he volunteered in mm. November 14, so shortly after the war was declared, went to Trentham, a three months troop ship, arrives in, in Egypt, and then lands at, at Gallipoli uh, early June. So the men had already been there fighting before that. They had a two-month stalemate where both sides were completely worn out and they were, they were suffering casualties daily from, from sniper fire, but there was a two-month spot where nothing happened. And then the Allies decided that uh, they should attempt to take Chanak Bear mm. and Hill 971, and the men were then moved up into the forward positions. The, uh, they were then on Chanak Bear and in the firing line. Um, there were men who were dying on both sides of them. Um, and the, the Turks uh, had two separate attacks at them, uh, all at, at night time, of course, um, and they repelled them. Uh, and eventually, uh, he was, was injured three times, once with a, with a bullet ricochet into the ribs, and then he had a um, he had what they called a diaphragm, a one-pound bomb that came from a shell, w w w which took out uh, his thigh. Um, uh, and then uh, he's in the trench with his rifle. A bullet snaps his bayonet, which then comes down and takes him across the skull. Uh, that that wound he carried for the rest of his life. At that stage, there's a call from the captain to for a, a volunteer to run to a group of reinforcements from the British Army whom they've seen, who've gone into a, a depression and are slightly out of out of sight, to call for those men to come up and then to take a letter through to the headquarters to say we're surrounded, we're stuck, we have no uh, supplies and we need men up. So he volunteered to do this, stripped off his, his gear and set off on this horrendous run. So uh, he was debriefed, he delivered the letter, debriefed, they got an idea of what was going on on uh, on Chanak Bear, and the fact that it was it needed reinforcement, mm. um, and he was then labelled and sent off to to a transport ship, and eventually reached Malta. So H. D. Skinner, who was so uh, crucial to the development of this museum, had most extraordinary history as a soldier. 
you would wonder how he was the man he was because uh, I think the the effect of uh, of what he saw and what mm. we the way that he speaks of men whom he knew who were dying beside him or wounded beside him and the letters just r roll yeah. on where it must have been absolutely horrific these were mates uh, Tony thank you very much thank you Dougal.